Okay, so for this project, we're going to be using Nikon's Universe Scale to explore the idea of scientific notation and scale and compare the amazing size of different things. So if you were to click on the link, you might get something like this. And what you're looking at is a scaled model that zooms in um, from an amazing scale of light years onto the microscopic level. And there are details for each scale. You can zoom in and zoom out. You can get help up here that'll walk you through the whole um, application. Down here you can see that we can scroll through different powers of 10 um, and we're measuring in terms of meters. So just as a quick example, if I click the 2 down here, I zoom in down to the scale and it'll give me a little summary, I can skip that, um, of the meter, right? And 2 means meter squared or 100 meters and you can see that they give you this square, it's 100 meters by 100 meters, and we just look at objects that fit inside that square. You can click on any object for some interesting facts about that object, the length or size of the object, and then they even give you interesting things that are either small or big relative to whatever object you've chosen. Now, this has a lot of potential because we can ask all sorts of questions. So I can close this. Let me say, let's say I just chose the flea and uh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex as a comparison, right? We can ask all sorts of questions. Now, if you're looking at this in the perspective of a project, what we might do is, let me just pull up our project sheet. So if you're using this template, you would fill out the object you've chosen here. For me, the smaller object is the flea, and specifically the cat flea, and the larger object is the Tyrannosaurus or T-Rex. And then just to get started we're going to list out the size that that the object has in whatever unit we're given. So I'm going to say that since they give me a range from about 1 to 9 millimeters I'll choose something in the middle there. Let's say 4.5 millimeters. Right, so it can be in meters or any other unit. And the T-Rex the fits in to about 15 meters. And then we're writing these numbers in scientific notation, so do your conversion. Here I'd write 4.5 times 10 to what? Well, to the 0, right? Because we already have a number between 1 and 10. Multiply by 10 to the 0, it's just 1. That's in scientific notation. The T-Rex, I would just write 1.5 times 10 to the first meters. And then here I might list any interesting facts that I note. Now, of course, there are interesting facts about every object here, but you might have to pick something to hold on to that you think could be useful. So I'm going to write, not applicable for the T-Rex, even though, of course, there are interesting facts. I'm going to hold on to the flea and the fact that it can jump 150 times, right, its height. Now, I would write that in here. So we're just getting started, and we list, we list out some of the data for the larger and smaller objects. Now we start to convert and set up our comparisons. So let's just zoom in a little bit. Um, okay, so here, right, this is a little bit blurry for you probably, but let's take a look. We want to convert each measurement to meters and we want to write this in scientific notation. So so first of all we have our, our flea and that's at 4.5, right, millimeters we said. Okay. So what would this be in meters? Well, the idea is that every one meter you have, you have 1,000 millimeters. If we look at this in exponential form, that means one meter is 10 to the third millimeters. And the interesting thing is if you reverse this, what do you have? Well, one millimeter. You can imagine if you need 1,000 millimeters to make a full meter, if you have one of them, you have one thousandth of a meter one one-thousandth, small fraction of a meter. If you write one one-thousandth of uh, a meter as an exponent, you get 10 to the negative third. In other words, 10 to the negative third meters is equal to one millimeter. Notice this interesting uh, reversal right here. And this is something you can use for almost any conversion. If one meter is 10 to the third millimeters, if we reverse that, one millimeter will be 10 to the negative third meters. So we're just switching from 10 to the third to 10 to the negative third meters. And this is helpful because if we have 4.5 millimeters and every millimeter is 10 to the negative third meters, that just means what? 
Well, that means if I convert this to meters, what I get is 4.5, just different color, 4.5 times 10 to the negative third meters. If we convert this to a decimal, we would see that we're on the right track. We have 0 0.0045 meters. And we can do the same thing for the T-Rex. Well, this time, uh, remember the T-Rex, we were given the item in, in meters, so it's just a simple conversion, right? 15 mil meters to 1.5 times 10 to the 1 meters. I'm just writing it there in scientific notation. So now I've got these two written down in scientific notation and meters. Okay, so next we look at a size comparison. How many times larger is the larger object? So here we use a little bit of division. And, and when you're using division, um, scientific notation can become really hand handy. So we have a T-Rex divided by the fleet. 4.5 times 10 to the negative third meters. And here what, what the nice thing is is that you can look at 10 to the first divided by 10 to the negative third using our laws of exponents, right? We could subtract the two exponents and get what? Well, 10 to the 1 minus negative 3 or 10 to the 4th. And, oops, and we're then dividing 1.5 by 4.5. And if you want, of course, you can use your calculator. So we have 1.5 divided by 4.5. And we get 0 0.33 repeating or a third. So we set that up. We have 1 third, although I will write 0.3 repeating. And we then convert this to scientific notation. Uh, 0.3 repeating, of course, we'll have threes forever, but if we multiply it by 10, we'll get 3 times 0.3 repeating, or 3 and a third. And then we would balance this out by dividing this by 10, so we get 10 to the third. So we have 3.3 times 10 to the third, and this is not really so much in meters, but we're just looking here at how many times larger. And mathematically, the meters would cancel out when you divide. It just tells you that um, the T-Rex is about a thousand times larger than the than the, the flea, right? About three thousand times larger. If you convert this number, you would see that. Okay, moving down. Here we kind of have an extension because we're told that a, a picometer is a very small measurement, right? It's a measurement, and we're given the ratio that one picometer, or at PM, is the same as 1 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. And then we're told something you probably do know, a little bit more obvious than the picometer, is that the 1 kilometer is equal to, or the same as, I'll put a ratio, 1 times 10 to the third meters. So we want to pick one of our objects, and, and it would be hard to read what it's saying, but it's pick one of the objects and convert uh, your measurements to picometers and then to kilometers. So we're going to use an idea from before. Now, if I if I use the T-Rex, I'm choosing a number that's a little bit easier to work with, 15 meters, the T-Rex. Let's convert this in kilometers first. So we know that one kilometer is 1 times 10 to the third meters. I'm just going to rewrite that um, so it's easier to read. So one kilometer is 10 to the third meters. That one might throw me off a little bit. And I'm going to reverse it, just like I did before. Here, what we can say is if you have one meter, what do you have? Well, one, it takes a thousand meters, right? Ten to the third is a thousand to make a kilometer. So if you have one meter, you have what? You have, well, you have one thousandth of a kilometer. So you have ten to the negative third kilometers. So if we scale this up, if you have 15 meters, you can ask, well, then what do you have for kilometers? Well, notice we're scaling this up by 15, just like, just like before, we're scaling it up or down. So then we would scale this up by 15. So we get 15 times 10 to the negative third kilometers. And if we rewrite that in scientific notation, we would say 1.5, right? Divide by 10 and then multiply by 10 times 10 to the negative two kilometers. And that's what we have here with 15 meters. So we've converted to kilometers. And with picometers, we can use the same strategy. Um, we can just say, okay, well, this is like 10 to the negative 12 meters, and that's one picometer. And I can reverse this. If I say, okay, well, um, a picometer now is uh, a lot smaller than a meter, right? If you have one picometer, you have a very, very small amount of meters, about 
is at one trillionth of a meter. But I could reverse this. What if you had one meter? How many picometers would it take to equal a meter? Just reverse the process and realize, oh, it's 10 to the 12th. It would take a, tr a trillion picometers to equal one meter, which is, that makes sense, because one picometer is just one one trillionth. You would therefore would take a trillion picometers to equal one meter. But we have 15 meters, right? Not one meter, so we scale up our ratio. And 15 meters is the same as 15 times 10 to the 12th picometers. Same scaling up before, we say we went from 1 meter to 15 meters, so you multiply by 15, and you do the same here. If we rewrite this as scientific notation, we get 1.5 times 10 to the 13th. Same idea, I'm dividing by 10, multiplying by 10. And that's in picometers. So if, if you were to measure the T-Rex in picometers, this would be your number for the length, and if you were to measure in kilometers, this would be your number. Kind of brings up the common point, what's the most reasonable way of measuring the T-Rex? Well, in this case, the meters. It's the closest to the T-Rex, right? Measuring it in picometers is a little, a little tedious because you get this very, very large number, and with kilometers, you get a very, very small number, so it's not very helpful. Now, for your project and whatever you're doing, you are asked to write down any ideas you have for an extension. Um, because truly, a great thinker goes beyond what's given and creates their own work, creates their own ideas. So, so you can go anywhere with this. I'll, I'll show you where I would go um, in this particular case. And there's no real right, right or wrong so much here. It's just, you know, what, what can you ask? Like, what can you do to push our thinking on this topic? So let me hide this layer. We don't need this. Hide this. Okay. So where did I go with this? Well, I started to think of the flea and the process of jumping. And I'm just amazed, of course, that the flea can jump 150 times its height. So the flea jumps 150 times its height. And you can go in all kinds of directions there. You, know, you can even draw a diagram showing the flea jumping. Um, what I did was I, I looked at this idea of, well, how high can humans jump and, and what, what, what would this mean if we had this superpower to jump? How high could we jump? So currently the, the, the world record, I believe, in vertical jumping is held by, uh, and I think I'm saying his name right, uh, Kador Ziani. And what's really amazing is that this person can jump, right, um, and it depends where you go for your, your source here, but he's 5'11", and he can jump 60 inches, right? Meaning he gets at least, and it could be more than this, depending on when he's jumping or where, and this, this video is made at a certain point in time, whatever. So he can jump about 5 feet. That's a lot of vertical height. Here you can see him, right, kicking um, the backboard as he dunks the basketball. Kind of amazing. But what if he had flea superpowers? What would that mean? Well, first of all, let's look at um, the human record for a vertical jump. If he's 5'11", if we convert that to inches, what do we get? Well, every foot is 12 inches, right? So that's 60 inches plus the 11 inches. So he's 71 inches tall. And he can jump, let's say, 60 inches. And maybe he's, he's higher than that now. I'm not, or maybe he has reached a higher. That's not the point. The point is he can jump not even his full body height, right? So he, he's an amazing jumper, but he can't even jump one times his height. So what does he jump currently? Well, you can set up a ratio and say, well, at 60 out of 70, and what is that as a percent of his, right, of his total height? If we solve this, 60 over 70 is 6 sevenths. 100 times 6 is 600. Divided by 7, we get our percentage, or in this case, our x value. So let's quickly pull the calculator and do that. So we have, right, um, sorry, 600 divided by 7. So that's 85.71. So, so almost 86% of his body height. Right. So this is right as far as apparently humans have gone so far for a vertical jump. But if he had the power of the flea to jump, what would that mean? Well, if he has a 70-inch height, and he could jump 150 times that, you just multiply. And that would be how high he can jump. Let's just do that calculation real quick. I guess we don't need a calculator, but since I have it pulled up, 70 times 150. So he would be able to jump 10,500 inches. 
swept it down. So if we had that flea power, you could jump this high. And you can keep extending the question. I mean, how many feet is that? Well, divide by 12. 875 feet. That's kind of amazing. And you can keep extending the question. Well, basketball, right, nets are 10 feet off the ground. So he can jump a total, or if you stacked, 87.5 nets vertically, he would still be able to reach and dunk. Right? Of course, he had to be maybe even a little bit higher than that because he could reach up too. So we can even look at that extension if he wanted to keep going. Right? When he dunks, his arm is going up beyond his body height, extending how tall he is and changing the whole way we're calculating this problem. I'm just calculating it compared to his standing height. But there's this idea that any comparison you look at, there's the potential for further analysis. So I hope you find something interesting. And if you're using uh, some type of model like this in, in your classroom or own investigations to explore scientific notation, I encourage you to pick as challenging of a comparison as you can find. All right, thanks.